The purpose of this lecture is uh, to cover the idea of main offshore operations. And uh, during uh, this session we will cover next training objectives. Offshore loading, tanker and FPS operations. Diving support operations, ROV support operations. Also we will keep attention on pipeline operations, cable lay and repair operations. We will go a little bit more in details with the rock dumping operations, mobile offshore drilling units operations, and few words we will uh, direct to other functions and operations utilizing DP. And uh, here we will uh, check uh, something about passenger vessels, especially semi-submersible objects, and so on. So let's go, gents. We have a very interesting session. Uh, which uh, will give us excursion uh, to different type of uh, offshore objects and uh, many video examples uh, I'm going to use during this session. Uh, so, Jans, uh, let's uh, summarize the idea of FPSO and the shutter tanket and them operations and then uh, I will give you the detailed plan of uh, shutter tank approach to FPSO operational area. On approach, uh, the acquired position on the third point, the circle is determined by the heading of the vessel. This heading may be a calculated weather vane heading, or the best heading against of environments, or calculated by the DB system in the tank without reference to the FPSO or it may be the FPSO heading obtained by means of telemetry. In the latest case, the two vessels should maintain the same heading at all times. Further limitations arise due to the maximum allowable angular offsets between the alignment of the hose and the heading of the tanker. For positioning, vessel of this type will use a relative GPS or DAPS. This kind of position reference system is already discussed during the course. And the DARPS as a prime positioning aid, yielding positioning information reduced to range bearing data from the FPSO terminal location. The other preferred position reference uh, for FPSO and shutter tanker is Artemis. With an Artemis fixed station located on the FPSO, the mobile station located on the tanker. A weak link in the fight in this arrangement relates to the FPSO gyro. This heading data is transmitted to the tanker via the DAPS UHF link, meaning that the operation of the DAPS and input heading are both reliant upon the one UHF link. If this link is lost, the whole positioning strategy is jeopardized. If the wind wireless input is significantly error, due perhaps to wind shadow from the offshore loading tank itself, then the weather vane heading may be incorrectly calculated. Once the hose has been stopped, the hose is connected. Usually the hose is connected to the end of the hose and is handled automatically by hydraulic actuators to locate it into the secure it to the hose couple. The DPO may adjust the surge value of the vessel position by inputting a new value of a set point circle radius. With the system in mooring mode, there is a preferred radius with a small amount of leeway for the DPO to make adjustment. The vessel must be ready to break off the operation at any time and uh, get on the way. To this end, the three emergency status are defined and alarmed as ESD 1, 2 and 3. ESD stands for Emergency Shutdown and Disconnection. The vessel and field operator in a handbox will specify the criteria under which any emergency shutdown disconnection status is raised. And the common name actions, often the offshore loading tank is unmanned and the vessel initiates the emergency shutdown function by means of a simple bridge mounted selector switch. Gents, look at the sketch. Here is presented one of the plans from uh, one of the companies uh, which Shatter Tanker has to follow during station keeping uh, 
when on cargo operations near the FPSO. So there are some areas which are described on the sketch. And those areas are, if you see, yellow, light green and green. And we have a position deviation areas and we have heading deviation areas. Let's uh, look at the position deviation area. Generally, when our tanker arrives and connected to the FPSO, it has set of scenarios and at certain deviation, the shutter tanker may be disconnected from FPSO. And if you see in our example, 100 meters is the ESD2 scenario where the shutter tanker must be disconnected. But if the shutter tank stays at a distance of 90 meters away from the FPSO storm, then we have is the scenario 1, which is known as stop pumping. If uh, we stay in area 85 meters, uh, then uh, that area is uh, known as the advisory, so master will make decision based on his experience and the environmental conditions which we have right now and will make action based on his own experience. Then at the 70 meters, if you see here, yeah, this is our target zone for DP operations. And then again, if the distance is decreased till 65 meters, is the one stop pumping. If the distance is about 60 meters, then we have is the two scenario, emergency shutdown disconnection. And here the disconnection probably will happen. So the shutter tanker, it is visible from here, is very restricted on position keeping and the preferable area is a 70 meters away from the FPSO storm. That will give for us enough slack during the cargo operation. The angular deviations, guys. Bow position limits. Have a look. We have next degrees values. If we are deviated from the FPSO's heading more than 40 degrees, then ESD2 disconnect. If we stay at the 35 degree deviation from FPSO's heading, then stop popping probably will happen. And our preferable area is a maximum deviation on heading, which is about 25 degrees from FPSO heading. So plus or minus 25 degrees. This is our deviation sector. I hope uh, this sketch uh, gives you the very informative uh, base for conducting of uh, shutter tank FPSO operations. And the red sector you see uh, means uh, what? 40 degrees is the two that one is disconnection. So plus or minus 40, 35 and 25 degrees limits by heading we have. Normal routine of take operation should be conducted in the green sector. Remember that and uh, any company which is uh, connected with the tandem operations, FPSO and shutter tank, they will provide you their open procedures and their open operation manual which describes uh, the connection details. So my example is just one of the available uh, regulations on the market. You have to understand that in North Sea they have their own set of regulations. In Brazil you can meet quite different regulations from North Sea. So study company manuals to ensure that uh, you know the procedures for your vessel.